దూరవిద్యా విధానంలో డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ దేశంలోనే మొట్టమొదటి సార్వత్రిక విశ్వవిద్యాలయం దాదాపు రెండున్నర దశాబ్దాలుగా దూర విద్యా విధానం ద్వారా కంప్యూటర్ కోర్సును అనుసంధానం చేస్తూ బిఏ బీకాం బిఎస్సీ డిగ్రీ కోర్సులను అందిస్తోంది పోస్ట్ గ్రాడ్యుయేషన్ స్థాయి డిగ్రీ డిప్లొమా స్థాయి కోర్సులను ఔత్సాహికులైన విద్యార్థులకు అందిస్తోంది డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ సార్వత్రిక విశ్వవిద్యాలయం స్థానికంగా స్వయం బోధన పద్ధతిలో ముద్రణ రూపంలో రూపొందించిన కోర్స్ మెటీరియల్ అందిస్తోంది కోర్స్ మెటీరియల్ అధ్యయనానికి సహకరించే విధంగా రేడియో టెలివిజన్ పాఠ్యాంశాల ఆధారంగా కార్యక్రమాలు ప్రసారం చేస్తోంది అధ్యయన కేంద్రాల ద్వారా ఏర్పాటు చేసే సలహా సంసర్గ తరగతులు సైన్స్ ప్రాక్టికల్ సౌకర్యాలు విద్యార్థులకు స్వయం అధ్యయనానికి ఒక చక్కటి అవకాశం ఇవి విద్యార్థి సమీపంలో ఉండే అధ్యయన కేంద్రం నుంచే పొందొచ్చు Yeah, on behalf of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Open University and my own behalf, I welcome you all to this live teleconferencing program of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Open University. Friends, today we are here to discuss about uh, the topic pricing policies and strategies, which is the part and partial of uh, marketing management for the students of MCOM first year of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Open University. And friends, today's topic for discussion is pricing policies and strategies as we all of us know marketing has four important elements or decisions we call it four p's product price place and promotion and among the four elements of marketing mix pricing is one of the important decisions of marketing managers by any companies engaging in selling goods and services and friends the the price is the important element as we uh, uh, discussed just now it is a monetary value of a product or service in the process of exchange of goods between the company or the customers and sometimes it is within the uh, manufacturers and distributors also and we all of us know price is the value of a quantitative measure for converting a product into some value and there are uh, def many definitions given by philip kotler william j stanton and according to kotler price uh, is uh, the amount of money charged for a product or service through exchange process whereas william j stanton talks about pricing is an art of translating into quantitative terms that is value of the product or service being sold by marketing organizations or companies so in this a discussion we have two a subject expert along with me and one among them professor nrk reddy who is left to me uh, is director founding director of synergy school of business and uh, a senior professor who is teaching marketing management uh, for about 25 years and plus next to him and another uh, speaker for this discussion is professor gopinath currently working in uk and uh, adjunct faculty to synergy school of business hyderabad and he is also having more than 20 years of teaching experience in the field of marketing and supply chain uh, related areas and friends we all of us know price is the value of product or service which is charged in the exchange process between the buyer and the seller and this price and pricing is known to be synonymous but price is a basic price which is fixed or set by a company before launching the product for the purpose of selling whereas pricing is a continuous process which get change from time to time for the same product or product of with with differences and uh, generally pricing will be decided by the marketing managers of those companies 
while taking several issues into consideration such as cost of the product, demand for the product and the features of these products which are intend to market, uh, sell in the market. And before that, uh, let us have an overview of this discussion. For a 40 minutes, we are going to discuss about the what is the concept of pricing and then determinants of pricing and pricing methods which are generally available for the marketeers and also strategies that the companies adapt from time to time. And uh, this is for about 40 minutes and remaining 20 minutes will be available for you all to interact with us and uh, get any clarification you want about this present topic only. And uh, the, to contact us for getting clarification, you may use these uh, telephone numbers 040-2703-1431, 040-2703-1432 and another number is 040-2703-1433. I repeat these numbers once again, 040-2703-1431, 040-2703-1433. So, your questions must be related to this topic only and uh, we before we go into start the discussion. So, let me ask Professor NRK Reddy to explain or to begin the session by explaining what is the concept of pricing and how it is important for the marketing organizations. Uh, uh, professor, uh, you have already covered as a part of introduction. Uh, the, the pricing is very, very predominant variable in marketing decisions. Um, there are four P's, product, price, promotion and place, but you know, all are equally important, but price is more important. Right. Why is it more important? Because profit is the blood of business and money is honey, which is sweet to any. So, without you know, proper pricing strategy, the company may not be able to survive. For example, if you fix a very high price, and uh, you know, company may get you know advantage provided you sell the products at a higher price, but people may not buy, so the company gets closed. If you fix very low price, everybody buys, but you may not get the required profit for the company, so existence of a company is threatened. Therefore, high pricing is dangerous, and low pricing is also dangerous for a company's existence. So the appropriate pricing. So how appropriate <coughs> and uh, what is this appropriateness of pricing? And uh, marketers decide on the basis of various elements, uh, especially the paying capacity and uh, the kind of market demand and the kind of products that you produce and the value that you create on various you know, parameters we decide the price. Therefore, pricing is a very, very significant variable as you have already uh, mentioned and it is a value that the customer is proposing when he is buying a product. For example, when I, when I pay for some product by paying some price. And price and cost are not the same. There is a difference between price and cost. Cost is from the producer's <coughs> perspective. What is the amount of money that you invest to make a or manufacture a product is a cost. Price is beyond this cost and the, the kind of you know uh, the margin that you know producer is expecting on the cost. So that is also included, and the transaction costs are there. So in the sense, in, in exchange of a good, there are different transaction costs are there. All these costs are also involved and incorporated in the in the total pricing. Therefore, pricing strategy and a pricing mechanism is a very very pertinent uh, for a success of any business. Uh, Professor Gopinath, so we come to know what is the pricing and all that, and uh, now what is a price setting, and what are the determinants of price setting? Well, um, as uh, uh, Dr. N R K mentioned very clearly about the the importance of the, the pricing because uh, if, if the pricing is not getting right, then however the quality of the product is, still the product would fail. Therefore, it is very important for the, the sellers while they are setting the price to understand what are the key determinants. Uh, one of the key determinants they should first look into is um, divided into to internal factors in or internal determinants and external determinants. When we say internal determinants, particularly with reference to the internal um, uh, setup of the organization, like what are the goals of the business organization, what they want to achieve, because the pricing that an organization is setting should be able to support 
the internal uh, objectives such as the smart objectives which are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time bound objectives which must be satisfied. So, that is where the internal factors come into play. Then when you look at the external factors or the determinants such as the market competition, who are your competitors? What is the level of competition that you are going to face when you are setting the price? So, at least your pricing should be able to match with what is being charged in the market which is comp competition based. So, the, the key factors is, in, is as I categorize them into internal and ex external determinants which are specific to the firm and external factors are those which are not only specific to a firm, but every firm is affected by those factors such as the market competition as well as the government regulations because we cannot uh, ignore the, the impact of the government. Every com country has got its government rules and regulations. Every firm has to ensure that it complies with the price mechanism that the government puts in place and whatever the pricing that a, a firm sets, it should be within the compliance of the government. So, that is another determining factor. So, I would like to add to those things also the pricing objectives of the firm is also one of the factor and marketing objectives also yes. will determine the price yes. setting and also the policies and procedure that they adopt a particular company is also determine the price yes. determination. So, that is where we divide between internal and external right, right. determining so factors. Professor NRK, what are the objectives of uh, pricing decisions? Why companies go for decisions, decisions and decisions after pricing? Why? Yeah. So, when we are fixing a price, there should be a reason, there should be a logic. So, why we fix this price? Right. Uh, for example, uh, when we are fixing very high price, why do we do that? So, probably we are interested in making quick money and get out of the business. Could be the reason that you fix very high price. Or you are fixing very low price, uh, maybe you are interested in market you know, penetration in the sense you wanted to maximize your sales and that could be one reason. So, it's on the basis of uh, the, the competition prevailing and you can categorize the pricing objective as profit orientation. Without a profit, we don't run any business. Right. So, is it profit is profit maximization. When you say profit maximization, it is not per unit of, uh, you know, uh, sale that we make. And uh, say m you, you sell more, for example, more right. quantity you sell, probably the margin may be lesser, but you may, you may get more as a revenue. So, therefore, the per unit, uh, you know, how much you charge as a markup could be one reason. So, profit orientation is one. The second one is the sales orientation. So, sales, or, uh, I wanted to be a leader in the market. Right. So, sometimes it so happens when, when you get into that mood of a sales oriented marketing, you look at the competition and probably your objective is not to maximize the profit, you want to kill the competitors in the short period. Maybe in the long run, probably you may become a leader and then probably make more money in the long run rather than the short period. That could be one reason. Possibly the third alternative could be there are a number of players already there in the market and your own existence is threatened. Therefore, you, you, are, you are interested in maintaining the status quo. Therefore, you wanted to continue in the business. Therefore, you reduce the price or probably uh, it is only to survival of the fitness. So, uh, fittest. So, uh, the survival is a major problem. Therefore, you, you fix the price according to that and probably you will get away with that. Though you are not happy with the kind of a price that you are fixing, but uh, as competition is increasing for the sake of survival, you may have to do, uh, you know, cut a price cutting sometimes. So, this is another way of, you know, objective we, we fix as a right. uh, pricing. Yeah, objective. Gopina, there are uh, different uh, companies following different pricing methods, right? Yes. And uh, they are search in search of uh, suitable pricing method, right? Can you identify different types of pricing methods available for market years? Right. There are different uh, uh, methods of pricing which are available, uh, but of which uh, there are uh, most popular methods that uh, firms would, would choose, right. such as the, the main important method that most of the firms would choose is cost based. First, you need to determine what is the cost of making your product. Once you understand what is the cost that you are going to incur in order to manufacture the product, then you will look at how, what are the different, uh, different uh, efficiencies with which you can put the cost to the lowest possible. If you are able to put the cost at the lowest possible, then you are likely to charge the lowest price that any other seller could charge in the market. So, in that way, you are more likely to gain a uh, high share in the market because you are a cost leader in the market because your cost of production is the lowest compared to your competitors. 
So this is the most popular method, which is on the cost based. The other one is based on the market right. based pricing, where first you determine how much is the affordability of your consumer. What is the maximum price which they can pay? So that's where the segmentation comes into picture. Right. You segment the market, then you identify your consumer factors in terms of um, demographic factors such as what is the income levels. Got it. So once you know the income levels of your consumers, that determines how much price they can afford to pay. So once you know how much price they can afford to pay, that means your price is coming from the market, contrary to the previous method which I, I just mentioned that, in the cost-based method, first you are determining the cost, right. and then you are fixing a selling price based on your cost. But the second method is quite contrary to or opposite. You are first determining what is the market price right. where the consumer can afford to pay. And then you are setting your production cost in such a way that you, you, the firm could make its profit margin. At the same time, it can also offer the product where the consumer can afford to pay. Yeah, to conclude these uh, pricing methods or uh, broadly what uh, Professor Gopinath was saying, uh, market oriented pricing and cost oriented pricing and all that. So by knowing that based on cost based pricing, what is mar markup pricing and uh, why it is so popular, Professor Reddy? Yeah, uh, you see basically when we are fixing the price, the major component or the very significant component anybody takes into account is the cost of production. How much is the cost? So that cost further can be decomposed into labor costs, material costs, and then uh, marketing costs, all this. Uh, so selling costs. So uh, the cost is a major component. So I when, I, when I'm manufacturing a product, the best thing would be at least, you know, I should be able to cover my costs. Right. When I'm able to cover <coughs> the cost, and I'm, I'm not getting any profit, but I'm just covering my cost. But as an entrepreneur, when I'm producing a product, and uh, naturally, I have certain you know, uh, profit interest. Yes. So how much is that margin markup yeah. so that I can uh, you know, have on that? Say, can that be a 5%? Can that be? So it, we say, in general terms, it's a reasonable profit. Right. So cost of production plus reasonable profit put together is a price. How reasonable is that reasonable profit is important. So for me, 10% is a reasonable profit. For somebody, 5% is a reasonable profit. Someone probably expects 25% as, as a reasonable profit. Therefore, that is it 5 or 10 or 25%, what percentage? So that's basically we call it as a markup. What kind of a markup that you are expecting? So usually in, in say, um, socialistic economies where uh, the cost of production is taken, where the profit is not a major you know, consideration. Right. Uh, and in those countries probably, uh, in our country also, for example, coal mines, if you look at right. the pricing of a coal mine, depends on the labor, on the cost of production, and then on that a reasonable profit margin. Look at our RTC. Uh, these are the, some of the companies where they look at a reasonable profit mar as, as a margin, and then accordingly they fix the price. So cost of production is a major, and on that you add just some product. Uh, a markup. So markup is vary, varying from product to product or company to company. How it is going to be determined? Yeah, th that again depends on uh, as, as we have discussed uh, you know, as an earlier question. Right. Uh, say product to product, say for example a company may produce a number of products. So right. when we talk about a product line yes. and there are few products where uh, they can earn more, more profit. So because they are more popular, more demanding in the industry or maybe the customers are more there. So in such cases, and you charge a little more, but right. there are few products which are not saleable as you know, maybe old products. Right. So that depends on the product life cycle, in which part of the product life cycle the product is falling right. into. Professor Gopinath, uh, now let us focus on what is break-even pricing and what uh, are the advantages out of it? Right, break-even pricing is where a firm sets a pricing in such a way that at least it has its, the revenue that it generates from the sales is equal to what is the cost of manufacturing that particular product. Right. That means neither there is a profit nor there is any loss situation for the business. Why do firms uh, set break-even pricing? One of the reasons could be that they initially want to charge a low price. Right. Thereby, the firm products will become more and more known to the consumers. And once the consumers are satisfied with the products that are being offered by the firm, then they try to gradually increase the price. That's where the firm starts realizing the profits. So it's, it's, it's a kind of a pricing strategy which is used in, in order to ensure that they get to know in the market first, initially, in the initial stages. 
why what are the advantages of this uh, break in pricing is th since the firm is charging a low price it will put a entry barriers to the newcomers right because if, if when a, a new firm is trying to enter into the market obviously they cannot sell at a kind of a price which the existing uh, well known firm is charging for so one of the advantages for this firm is the firm's market share will increase right. because it is charging the lowest for uh, price, price by achieving the break even yeah what is target return pricing then yeah the the target return pricing is how it's you know basically you know it's a, uh, having a kind of a lead from the break even point right. for example <coughs> break even point uh, as as professor rightly said you know um, uh, there is no profit no loss situation is called a break even point right. at that point you know he is not expecting any profit but you know at a at a very low price he is charging he is just covering the you know the total cost that he is incurring right. so at that point naturally it is a cheaper because uh, the, there may be some uh, you know first movers or the first movers will always have an advantage and they have a branding they have longer years of existence in the business therefore they charge higher price so when you fix at a lower price and probably your products become more cheaper and in the in the pyramid and probably you are catering to the needs of the you know bottom of the pyramid so market size is bigger so that way uh, when you when you look at the uh, you know uh, break even pricing is a very uh, convenient so target return is a basically i am investing so much of money right. and on this money i should get at least this failing which i can't sustain the business right. so it's a question of sustainability and i i would like to invest so much of money on that i want a return so it's a basically we calculate on the basis of return on investment can we call it as roi pricing exactly return, return on, on investment, investment pricing, pricing. Yes. right so uh, professor uh, gopinath yes. what is perceived value pricing because uh, pricing methods are uh, n number which are available for market years and how we determined or come to a conclusion that perceived value pricing is also one of the suitable marketing method right um, first of all we must understand what is the perceived value right there is always a, a gap between the perceived value from the consumer uh, perspective right. and the value that the firm is offering to the consumers so since there is always a gap between both the parties in terms of the perception of the value it will be more sensitive for the consumers when it comes to what is the value they are expecting from the firm right when you say value means how much price a consumer is paying and in return what are the what is the worth they are getting it so when setting the price the consideration for the firms is what is expected in terms of the value and are we giving the same value by setting a right price which the consumer feels that i'm getting what i'm deserved for the price which i'm paying is so that is what is basically a, a a perceived value pricing so value definition is different for the consumer and value definition is different for the firm so fixation of pricing or decision of pricing from the point of view from of customers the of how the they feel and how what they, they feel, feel and what their and expectations are from this product from the firm uh, uh, i would like to add uh, right. to the point what professor uh, uh, gopinath is trying to yeah. express now you see the perception of a, a customer differs from uh, you know uh, product to product right so what you c perceive that as a product for example i go to a hotel uh, i come from a village and then i find you know uh, is a excellent hotel right. maybe after 4 years i go to the same hotel after visiting many uh, hotels abroad and then i find that this product is uh, this hotel is not so good right. because always when we are talking about a perce perceived value and the perception of a consumer do changes over right. a period of time so yeah. the True. perception and, and a calculation of that perceptive value is very very difficult for a marketer to fix the price also it it also changes due to the increased level of competition as well right. and and customer always keeps a reference price in his mind right. for example we go to a market and say especially women when they go for buying a sari and then say okay this sari is i liked very much and then immediately they ask the price mm. they say price is quoted then they say no 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 i don't want this because I, I like this product, but not at that price. Right. So price is always the reference price is taken. Therefore, if it is a one thousand rupees, is a worth. If it is a ten thousand rupees, is not worth. Which means that when I am paying money, there is a pain, and when I am getting a product, there is a gain. So pains and gains are measured. Yeah. So when the pains are equal to the gain, and you buy, when the pains are more, and you reject the product. 
Sometimes the gains are more than the pain. Right. Uh, so so you, you, you feel you are delighted. That's, right. that's how the market, uh, you, know, uh, you know, consumers will react pursue, to the market. Pursue the pricing, right. Exactly. Those are ready. So when it comes to industrial goods, yeah. we have been discussing about uh, general goods and products, whatever, and services. But when it comes to industrial goods, so what type of pricing we, our companies do adapt? Can yeah. we call it as a sealed bid or tender pricing or what type of pricing they adapt? Correct. So wh when you talk about industrial pricing, B2B, yeah. uh, you know, issues come in here. Now, for example, you are buying uh, materials in bulk. So in such case, you know, we do not know at what price. See, if th there are two issues for any company. Either they can uh, buy the material from outside or they can manufacture uh, their own products also. Yes. Say, for example, if the products are not, you know, supplied on time and uh, their uh, success is getting affected. Right. Therefore, how efficiently I produce and reach the customer depends on my suppliers. If I have good suppliers and supplying the material on time, and uh, my success also depends on the success of my suppliers. Right. Therefore, what I do is in the industrial sector, I do not know at what price I can produce this particular product. It so happens sometimes the companies also do not know at what price we can get this uh, material. Right. Therefore, when you when you ask the people, uh, say to give their sealed bids, right. you know the the auctions will happen. So the lowest bidder will get the chance. That means the car, the companies are always interested in cutting the costs. Right. So getting a profit is either reducing the cost or increasing the revenue. Revenue increase is external factor because it's uh, again uh, determined by the quantity demanded, also multiplied with the price. So therefore, the revenue is decomposed as a re uh, into price and a quantity demanded. Therefore, the internal component is reducing the cost is always better. For example, look at the uh, airline industry today. The cost components are measured and what are the costs that can be avoided, what are the costs that cannot be avoided. So we make ABC costing, activity based costing. Right. Certain activities can be, uh, you know, cannot be postponed, cannot be substituted, cannot be given to others because they are core. For example, safety. Yeah. And you know, say for example, uh, refreshments that we serve in airline, in, uh, say in aeroplane, that is a secondary. Therefore, probably you can outsource that. So therefore, yeah. this is how they calculate and, yeah. and then reduce the cost. Yeah, Gopinath, in case of industrial goods again, yes. So, is there any other alternative pricing methods available for industrial goods beyond the tender pricing or sealed bid pricing, whatever the Professor Renark Reddy was uh, trying to explain? So, is there any alternative pricing methods available for industrial goods? Right. Since industrial good, as uh, uh, Dr. Reddy has clearly mentioned that, it, see it, it, it is a, a, a type of good industry which come under B2B. Right. Where, first you have to determine the requirements of your customers. Right. Your customer's requirement will tell you what the type of pricing that you need to charge. Here you use a discriminatory pricing because you will not charge the same price for all the, the customers because right. your pricing is specific to the requirements of the customer because you are in a B2B. Right. So I would uh, suggest that a kind of a, a pricing which is different uh, for different customers because of their different requirements. Similarly, same products or that is industrial products may be imported or exported to some other countries. In that situation, what we call the pricing method they follow? Well, in Professor Reddy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, see, uh, see, sometimes it becomes difficult for us to fix the price. For example, right. if it is entirely an innovative product, right. how do we fix the price? And all products are not heavenly bodies. They don't come from the sky all of a sudden. Right. So most of the products are coming through the evolutionary process. When it is, say for example, <coughs> broomstick is there. And when, when you discover, a, uh, you know, probably the floor cleaners or maybe the dust cleaners, etc. The broomstick is the, uh, you know, a product and then probably that is evolved into a new product. For example, uh, radio has evolved into a television, television, black and white television to the color television and so on and so forth. Therefore, you have certain base and on the basis of that probably you can fix the price. Second possibility could be the going rate pricing. Right. So this is also go along with the crowd. Yeah. So there is a saying in Telugu, Nalgur to Pato Narayana. And when, whenever there are you know the similar kind of products, how they are charging, maybe five percent here and there margins you calculate and fix the price. That is also one possibility that you can fix the price. Can we call it competitive pricing same? In case Obviously, of going the rate competitors pricing? are there, and according to the competitors, and you know you choose you know. Uh, probably when there is a leader, market leader, probably you, you follow the market leader sometimes. Right. Or if you want to be the leader, and probably what you do is you fix a little 10% higher than the existing, and then you become over a period of time a leader. Yeah. So whether you want to be a leader or you want to be a chaser, you got to decide. Yeah. 
Yeah, Professor Gopinath, having yes. discussed the various methods like markup pricing, perceived value pricing, target return pricing, sealed bid, FOB pricing, going rate pricing, right? So, we have given enough uh, stuff on these methods. And now, let us focus on pricing strategies, right? So, what are the, what is pricing strategy? Well, as and we what are the strategies available for market? Right, use? as the, the word itself says strategy, right. it means you are targeting something on long term basis. Correct. So, that is where we can see the difference between a method and a strategy. Correct. A strategy is always aiming at how to achieve long term success by setting that particular type of a, a pricing strategy. Right. So, one of the pricing strategies that we can see is a penetration pricing strategy. Right. That is where the firm initially sets a, a low price mm -hmm. and get deeper and deeper into the market. Once the product uh, you know, gains image and reputation in the market, then they start slightly increasing the price. So one of the popular uh, strategies is, you know, penetration. Uh, penetration. You go deeper and deeper into the market gradually until your product is well known in the market. Right. Yeah. So these are the, you see the basically the pricing strategies or we call uh, penetration pricing, uh, what you call uh, skimming pricing, then uh, premium pricing, and price bundling and all that. So yeah. these are the pricing met the strategies, strategies generally companies adopt, right? So, out of this, uh, now I request Professor Reddy, uh, can you give us uh, the uh, merits and demerits along with the concept of skimming price? Yeah. What I is skimming price and what are the merits and demerits of it? Correct. Uh, skimming is basically when, when you are uh, churning the curd and those the creamy layer forms, right? So, similarly, the creamy pricing also is called creamy pricing. For example, you look at the pyramid, you know, the, the, the bottom of the pyramid, mid of the pyramid and the peak of the pyramid. So, th there are uh, the, the different kinds of buyers in the society or the customers are of a different nature, but you know, all customers are not of the same category. Some people have more uh, purchasing power, right. so they have a consumer surplus and you charge more consumer surplus, right? So, you, you, you take part of the, uh, their consumer surplus and probably fix very high premium price. So, skimming price is basically fixing very high price and, and slowly probably over a period of time you reduce the price. Now, the question is why? Why companies and when do they practice this kind of a strategy? Right. For example, you, you indulge in a kind of innovation and you invest crores of money in that and it takes about 10 years for you. For example, look at the pharmaceutical industry today. In pharmaceutical industry to, uh, you know, start an innovation and then coming to the, you know, market level and then selling a drug in the market, it takes about almost about 10 years. Of course, in the uh, recent times, the, the, the time is being reduced because of the innovations, etc. But you see, you put your investments and put your all effort for 10 full years and then discover a drug. And in the meantime, others will simply copy it and then within no time and they make a replicate uh, the similar kind of a product. Therefore, what they do is, you see, before somebody copies this and I want to make quick money, right. therefore, number one, it's an innovative product, technologically, you right. know, appealing to the people. Therefore, there are no competition, uh, there are no competitors available. In such cases, you, go, you can go for an innovative price with an intention right. that I would like to get back my money very quickly okay. and then get out of the business because in the long run, I do not know whether I am going to make money or not. For instance, uh, IT related products called pen drive, for example, if you take. Earlier, we used to get it 1000 rupees and plus. Now, even 300 rupees or 200 rupees, very cheaply we are getting it. Now, can we call it as a skimming price or penetration price? No. Initially, when you fix a very high price, for example, right. Right. Sonia Bravia, when it yes. is discovered yes. first time, right. and, and, and uh, the kind of a products, right. right? You know, maybe high-end TVs, yes. and it may cost ten thousand dollars. Maybe in the next two, ten months down the line, and uh, alternative companies mm -hmm. also will produce similar kind of a products. So when the other competitive products are available at a cheaper price, and you will not be able to charge <laughs> that much price. In the meantime, you already made money, right? Because you are you are uncertain about the product and because of the competition that is growing. The secondly, over a period of time what happens, uh, the, the new products are coming. Sometimes they produce a better products mm -hmm. than this yeah. because they take cue from this and then they do not need to invest so much of money because you do not need to rediscover the wheel every day. Right. Therefore, they get at a cheaper price and therefore you are forced to reduce the price. Therefore, you quick money you make in the uh, Initial process. process initially. Yeah. Therefore, skimming price. Yeah, Gopinath, having discussed about skimming price and when it is suitable, right? And we were also discussing about the initial low price is called penetration pricing, right? 
basically when it is suitable more and what are the advantages for the marketeers and also the customers um for the customers is because um, the advantage for the for the, uh, the customers is that because of the the orientation with which the pricing is set by the firm that they will find that the product is within their reach they can afford to pay uh, and and, and they they are not deprived of uh, to satisfy their needs because of the the pricing that is uh, is set by the the firm which is affordable to them right and for the uh, the firm perspective the advantages is that since it is it is uh, you know the first to to get into the market and uh, you know get as much as it could before the competitors enter into the market right you know like it's like when the candle is showing the light try to make sure that you know you finish off your your stuff before it melts once the competitors enter into the market you cannot claim yourself as a as a unique yeah. in the market so this is where the advantage that the firm has to take when it has the opportunities there are companies right there are companies which introduces a particular product at low price and they try to habituate the customers and then they raise their price so what is the reason um the reason for this is that um first you know they want to impress the the customer right and and also once they they impress the customer then they start to to introduce you know different things for them like you know uh, earlier uh, dr reddy mentioned about bundle pricing right means with one product that you are able to satisfy the customer particularly with the low price right. then you are also able to sell related products as a bundle so that the main product is also giving the demand for the related products yeah. so in that way by selling it at a lower price also still the firm is able to make it yeah professor reddy can you uh, I, include I have, yeah. yeah i have yes. a point to add uh, to what professor gopinath is trying to Mention. communicate right uh, for example uh, see the, the very purpose of low pricing or penetration pricing is i want to penetrate into the market right. at a cheaper price so that Th this situation is a suitable th this pricing <coughs> strategy is suitable only when you are not sure about the success right one possibility second possibility could be i want to get rid of all these competitors first is so a basically the objective is not to gain profits but to clear the all the competitors yeah. so probably it's a kind of a destructive kind of a mechanism also or the reach i want to reach you more reach number of people of therefore i am not worried about maximum profit or uh, margins yeah initially i i fix that let me stabilize first see when when we are not sure about this and once you penetrate into the market and then probably you create a brand and maybe you are uh, you know known uh, for some yes. time and uh, your branding image is very high and over a period of time you scale up further and then people whatever fix the uh, price you fix and then people will buy because you are known then we will we can call it as image pricing also yes, exactly course. yes so next coming to uh, professor nr kreddy what is geographical pricing can you give us some examples for this yeah uh geographical pricing is say for example look at the textbooks uh, yeah. that we buy right. and for uh, bangladesh pakistan india and you know these countries you know you have at a low priced editions right and uh, you know uh, the premium price they fix for others so this is also based on the geography of selling and because you know the product uh, uh, probably uh, the buyers or the customers are uh, different in different countries they got high purchasing power right. so wherever there is a higher purchasing power and uh, the based on the geography they fix the price this is also sometimes uh, called discriminating price you discriminate on the basis of the geography say rural areas the yeah. shampoo that we sell right. uh, probably is cheaper because they sell in sachets in urban areas because the bottle cost is much higher i don't want to take the names of the brands because you know it's a is a academic discussion uh, therefore uh, there are there are you know based on the geography the price uh, can be uh, charged it is applicable very much to even agriculture products or say uh, fertilizers for example it is manufactured or produced in one state and it is transported and selling intent to in another state yes. so price for the same product may be varied from this home state to uh, target state Correct. so th there is also another possibility right. because the manufacturing unit may be located in one place right. and you know the uh, the the customers <coughs> in and around that area probably the transport costs are lower yes and when you go on to the you know distant places yeah. especially in countries like australia where the geography is spread yeah. and you know the hamlets are very very small and uh, you know reaching the customer is a very very expensive therefore the transaction costs uh, transport costs reaching them all that is pretty expensive therefore they add to the total cost and then as a result the price may be different on the basis of the geography if you buy it in rural area price is different if you buy in this country price is different in another country price is different 
So the geography is a consideration on which you discriminate the price. Uh, what is dual pricing in this context? These two are complementary or substitute each other? Dual pricing is, you know, the, the welfare mechanism we take into account. For right. example, look at the uh, electricity department in our own Telangana state. Right. And for commercial pricing, it's different for a domestic uh, requirement, price. it's different. Okay. And similarly, earlier the telephone, uh, if you look at the night time, the price is different and the daytime, the price is different. Right. So like this, you know, dual pricing and they discriminate on the basis of the time of use and, uh, and uh, affordability, you know, of, the affordability of the customers and also the need of the customer also should be taken into account. For example, festivities, you look at uh, the, the day tomorrow, I think uh, uh, the festivity is coming and the fruits are more costly than now. Correct. And uh, come <coughs> tomorrow the fruits are very costly. So we are also very uh, you know, intelligent enough and we procure and then put our refrigerator full of fruits uh, three days before. And this is how the, the, the changing you yeah. know, pricing strategy, dual pricing is possible. Right. Gopinath. Yes. So what is psychological pricing? We all of us know psychological pricing <coughs> is also one of the strategies. Well, first of all, um, it is, uh, for a business to be successful, it is very important to understand the psychology of the customer. Right. If you understand the psychology of the customer, you know how to reach them, you know how to satisfy them. Right. So a psychological pricing is a pricing which sets a kind of a price which is not rounded off to nearest to rupee or nearest to dollar. Right. Say for example, setting a price like nine, 0.99, which is psychologically giving right. the, the impression to the customer that I'm paying less than 10 rupees yes. because I'm paying only 9 rupees and 99 yeah. I say. Yeah. So in this way, a psychological pricing is where in order to satisfy the psychology of the, the customer, because if they're psychologically satisfied, then th there is more likely that the business is, is successful. Yeah, in India particularly, we call it Vata pricing. Right? They, <laughs> they, they, right. they charge it uh, not to make it 100, but they call it 99. 99. And instead of 200, it is 199. Because the, the, the yeah. customer is still feeling that I'm paying less, less, less than 100 rupees. But th and, particularly, yeah. and particularly, this is very important when you're looking at the, the bundle of the products that the consumer is buying. Right. If a group of products you are pricing right. uh, by using a psychological pricing, mm. overall the consumer is able to make a saving. Means if they are buying 10 different products which right. are priced in the same way, right. overall on the 10 products the consumer is able to save at least one rupee. Yes. And, so, and to add yeah. a, pro, uh, you know, a point to what uh, Professor Gopinath is trying to say, right. uh, the psychological pricing is say for example when I buy a car, right. is it for a transport that I am buying? And if it is an ordinary car, I buy for a transport. If I am buying a, a, a very high costly car, I am not buying for that. I want to psychologically, I am prepared that I am, I am, I am belonging to the high end of the society. <coughs> right. Probably I want to uh, you know, satisfy my esteem needs. Correct. Therefore, I am buying this. So right. a particular car, by spending huge money, I buy right. uh, only for the respect. These are called vanity goods that we buy. The same car is uh, serving the needs of the transportation, but the pricing the makes the psychologically what you call uh, high end product correct. and low end yes. product or esteemed product correct. or basic product. And, and right. sometimes it's all, the customer psychology is basically, for example, uh, I come from a very uh, humble background. Right. My father was a, a school teacher or something right. like that. So when I become, you know, uh, something <laughs> higher in, in my career right. and I feel that, you know, all through I have put in so much of hard work, therefore now I deserve this, therefore right. I buy. Yes. So accordingly, you know, my psychology is that, therefore I am willing to pay higher price. Therefore, in some shops, you see, when, when say, what is the price range that you want to buy? And people say, no, no, much beyond this, you know, you, you show me the better ones, you know, high yeah. price ones. Some people ask for a higher price products because they satisfy their ego. And example for this uh, psychological pricing is we can say luxury cars. Exactly. Luxury right, cars, right. yes. So, Professor NRK, Sir. explain the, what is the promotional pricing? Yeah, when, when a product is uh, uh, launched, right. the, say for example, a particular car was launched in, I think, 1995, right. uh, so in a segment, and uh, they say, the first 30 days, right. uh, you see, we give you this offer, and you know, 30,000 lesser, so the competitor will reduce further reduction in that price, because you know, by introducing a new car, and uh, another car sales get affected badly. Therefore, the, the, the you know, first offer is given, is a promotional program that we are doing. And uh, see, we, we will uh, okay. give you 30% discount, 20% discount, insurance free, and one tank full of petrol free, and all that. Usually, so when you look at the consumer buying process, right. they, they initially get some kind of a, you know, idea into their mind to buy a car. Right. Then they indulge in a kind of a searching, do market research, 
and uh, you know, gather information, collate information, and then probably they make a decision to buy X car. But still, you see, A, E, C, D. One is uh, um, awareness. The second one is exploration. C is a commitment. D is final decision. Right. So, but you know, they take you know all these steps. They make a commitment to buy a X product, but they don't buy. So when they don't buy, and the the the, the sellers are very you know um, quick you know in selling the cars, but the buyers are not coming for. Therefore, when they say sizable segment of the people are liking my product, they made a commitment to buy my product, but they are not buying. Right. So in such case, I say that I give you a promotion. So if you buy in the next 30 days, and uh, there is an incentive for you, right. and uh, to get get that information, so you are instigating the customer. And you are creating a reason to buy the car now. Though I am committed to buy, now I am I'm buying because of this particular reason. Therefore, to induce the customers so that they quickly buy and we give that promotional price. In case of ready-made garments and uh, wrist watches, Correct. buy one get two free or buy two get one free or buy one get one free, what type of pricing we call it? Uh, easily see Is it come pricing, promotional pricing methods? It's a promotional pricing, uh, no doubt, but at the same time, this is also come under the loss leader pricing. Right. For example, you you say fix the price of a shirt yeah. at a lower price, and then so when you buy a shirt, obviously you got to buy the pants also. Right. So the 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 loss that they make here in loss leader in buying uh, selling a shirt, and they cover it up in selling the pants. Similarly, if you look at the cars, when they are selling the cars and the car uh, owner, the, the sellers don't get so much of margin because of the competition. Right. But you know, they cover it up in the period of five years when they, you go for a servicing. So therefore, this is called a last labor by <laughs> selling the spare parts and you know, the, the labor Insurance. costs of, uh, you know, the car clinic costs are pretty expensive and maintenance of a car is more expensive than buying a car now. Yeah. Especially high-end cars. Professor Gopinath, yes. what is FOB pricing? Um, so we use generally in uh, export-import context. This FOB is a kind of agreement between the buyer and seller. Right. Uh, when goods are uh, uh, you know, traveling over the frontiers, we Correct. call it as the frontiers, right. then apart from the, the, the product price, there are also other expenses which need to be, to be paid, such as the customs duty, mm. as well as the insurance, which has to be paid for the goods, mm. because goods are vulnerable to right. uh, different types of risks, such as you know, sea perils, or you know damaging of the goods. Yeah. So when the buyer is uh, requesting for a quotation from the seller, the seller has to clearly ask for whether you want us to cover all the expenses such as the freight, the customs duties and insurance, then the, the price which the, the seller is going to quote to the buyer right. includes the freight, insurance and any other expenses until the goods reach to the destination. Right. So this is called as FOB pricing. So FOB pricing is, is, is of two types, either at destination or at the time of sale. Right. So it, it all depends on what so we, we call this two. as a foot on board uh, right. pricing. So right. when, when I sell uh, a foot on board, uh, so basically who is going to bear the, the transport the cost? Transport right. cost. That's it. So if the foot on board means the, the, the manufacturer will uh, you know, clean his hands only when he puts the you know uh, uh, goods on the on the ship. That's right. his job right. is done, right. and the transport costs are borne by the uh, the customer. Right. Sometimes uh, it so happens that till the uh, you know the exchange happens, the the uh, uh, you know the company will bear. That is called uh, origin of FOB. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. So, is there any other pricing strategies, innovative pricing strategies we call generally? In yeah. addition to this premium pricing, scam penetration pricing, yeah. skimming price and all that. Yeah, there are many uh, pricing mechanisms. Uh, you know, for example, uh, the dual pricing we have discussed about, pay what you pay, uh, what you like. For example, price matching is a new concept that has come yeah. in the United States now. Yeah. For example, I buy a, uh, a particular uh, pen and say at $10, and then after two months or three months, I found that you know this uh, shop owner has taken more money from me. And then, uh, so because I compare with others, and then when I, when I go back to the same uh, you know, uh, seller and say, my friend got it for a $5, you have taken $10 from me. And so without asking any questions, there you know, the, no questions asked, and they put a board. And they say, okay, the price matching. So your friend got it for $5, so I have taken $10, you feel you are deprived of, therefore I give you uh, at a $5 return. Now that's called a price matching. This is one strategy. And uh, you know, whatever you feel like giving, Right. You know, for this, for example, there is one Anna Lakshmi uh, a hotel in Singapore. Right. 
Right. And you go there and eat the food like a buffet system. And whatever you feel like giving, you just give. If you don't give also, they don't mind. Some people give more money, some people don't give money. And this is also is possible. There are many such restaurants happened in, uh, you know, in US also. Whatever customer feels, there, you know, it is similar to that of, you know, value perceived value pricing, right? Uh, right? So uh, I feel that, you know, when I have a sumptuous lunch here, this lunch, according to me, costs about say hundred dollar. I pay hundred dollar. If it costs me only ten dollar, if I feel, I pay only ten dollar. Therefore, this this method is advantageous. <laughs> Uh, because the customers are willingly paying money, number one. Number two, this will uh, grow in a future course of time. The companies get advantage because there is no price wars. Right. You know, see, for example, if I fix a higher price and you know the retaliation from others happen. But when you go for this uh, perceived value pricing and there is no retaliation because the customers pay whatever they like. Yeah. And in such cases, willingly they are paying, therefore any newcomer comes and you know, uh, decrease the price also still they don't they don't buy that product because you are intentionally buying this therefore you are happy to pay that kind of a price yeah Pro professor gopinath yes so we generally go for uh, different pricing methods by different companies right so what is uh, product line pricing is it strategy or method right uh, product line pricing is a kind of a, uh, a strategy right. because uh, first of all let us understand what is product line when a firm is offering more than one single product, Correct. then we call it as a product line. Why uh, do firms of, uh, sell more than one product is, mm. it is highly likely today that a firm can survive by selling only one single product. Because when it comes to the fixed expenses, um, if, a, if a firm is selling more and more products, it right. will be able to reach the economies of scale because its average cost will come down. Right. Because fixed cost is spread over a wider output. So that's why one of the reasons for why companies sell more than one single product. So here is the question of the, as uh, Dr. Reddy has mentioned earlier about activity-based costing. Right. So when a firm is selling more than one product, they're using product line pricing. How they're using product line pricing is, first they're determining the price of each product and each activity to ensure that they have a detailed cost information right. so that they will be able to set a price which can you know, uh, suit to the to the different products. Yeah, Professor Reddy. I would like to add a yeah, point. Yeah. Uh, actually. Right. So when you talk about a product line, there are a number of products that a company produces. Right. So the in the product line, too big a product line is dangerous because you will not be able to manage so many children. Correct. And if it's too small a product, is more risky because you know products. you are doing few products and then probably you may incur losses. Therefore, the product line should be more appropriate. Now, how appropriate that uh, is a product line, and why? You know, in, in the product line also, you can see there may be mighty brothers, there may be weak sisters. Right. So, mighty brothers will earn a lot of money, and they are stars uh, in, in the you know, product line, and they earn a lot of money. And uh, you know, this money, what you are earning from few products, you are spending on the other products which are not doing well. So, the parasites will increase. So, therefore, what you need to do, sometimes you got to cut the or prune the product line, and uh, too many products. So, how do you decide that product line length? And uh, you know, if a, a, a product is not doing well in the past three years, and you are not getting profits, and you think that the you know, product is not possible to continue, and you cannibalize it, right? Cannibalizing in the sense, mm. you know, you kill your own product. Yeah. Yeah. Number two, and when you kill a product, and it also sometimes consumes a lot of executive time. Yeah. So if you alternately spend that kind of executive time on a, a product of a new product that you introduce. And it so happens in recent times, if you look at the product development activity, and 90% of the product ideas that we discover or identify are not very fructifying. Only 10% of products will see the products and reach the market. And what all the products that you introduce to the market, 10% only will survive. Right. And if you look at most of the companies today, what kind of uh, um, uh, the profit from where, you see, the products are coming. It is again the Pareto principle. Eighty percent of the revenue is coming from only twenty percent of the sources. Yes, yes, yes. So twenty new babies, <laughs> or maybe three to five year old babies in the, in the product line, will earn more profits. And any product which is beyond five years may not be able to earn profits. Therefore, they become old, and they reach the saturation level. Probably got to drop them from the product line. Yeah, in Therefore, case of agriculture, pro yeah. Therefore, yes. therefore, what you need to do is how length is the product line and if you don't create so many products, the question is sometimes though it is a loss to the company, still we maintain the product right. line. 
Otherwise, what we are doing is we are giving a scope for the competitor to enter in. And so when there is a vacuum, others enter in. And deleting them becomes very difficult over a period of time and face the competition and all that. Therefore, to avoid competition, though we are not interested, sometimes we add some products and increase the product line only to avoid the competition. For instance, Professor Gopinath, uh, China bazaars, there are many number of China bazaars in Hyderabad mm. or what you call in India also. Chain, chain. Yeah, China bazaars. They offered products <coughs> at cheaper price. What type of pricing strategies they are adopting and why it is uh, capturing the market in India? Because as the, you yourself mentioned that they are offering the, the products at a cheaper price. Right. That means most of the consumers can afford to buy their products. And why they are able to sell at a cheaper price is the scale of operations because they have their uh, you know, branches all over India. So they are they're selling more quantity. So when they are selling more quantity, certain overheads will be reduced. Right. Thereby, they are able to sell at a cheaper price. And when a firm is selling the products at a cheaper price, it is able to sell more quantity. So it's not compromising its profit margin still because volume is high, though price is cheaper. So in this way, um, China Bazaar is still able to sell at a cheaper Professor price. Reddy, after having all these pricing <coughs> methods and strategies, in case of FMCG, in case of rural context, and in case of affordability, point of view of the customers, which product strategy is more suitable, keeping all these line in mind? Uh, for example, in India, uh, when we look at the uh, you know the population and then the customer base yeah, and right. also their purchasing power. And uh, you know we, we see the majority of the people are at the bottom of the pyramid. Right. Therefore, the huge numbers, number one, and they are willing to buy, and they would like to all the time imitate the uh, customer or patterns buying of the rich people. Right. Therefore, you, you see the pseudo kind of a products and a kind of a imitative products coming into the market. And uh, see, quality has no relevance in, in India. Right. Therefore, the China bazaars are coming today. So the product, you know, a screwdriver, when you are buying that, it's a 10 rupees. When you buy a branded one, it costs 100 rupees. So for an individual who is buying a screwdriver, is a driver, that's all. And he doesn't understand the quality, what goes in. And therefore, you see so many, you know, uh, products that are also being advertised on the uh, television uh, today. They continuously, morning to evening, the entire channel is only for promotions. Uh, because of the you know lack of recognition for the quality maybe once the uh, you know people's purchasing power is increased and then uh, the education level of the people increase and uh, naturally they uh, demand a quality to products and in such cases the quality products will certainly come into picture and that point of time these chain of bajars over a period of time will uh, you know vanish thank you professor reddy today we have discussed uh, at length about what is the concept of price and pricing and how pricing methods are uh, done and then how competitors or companies are adopting pricing strategies in order to penetrate or skim the cream whatever we call it and also we discussed uh, psychological pricing, going rate pricing, dual pricing and FOB pricing and so and so forth. All these pricing strategies or methods whatever companies follows whether it is a small company or big company, whether it is uh, selling industrial goods or uh, ordinary consumer products goods. or consumer goods. All that uh, generally any company irrespective of their uh, production or irrespective of the customers or that is demand in the market, all these strategies will play. Not one particular strategy or method can cannot be used. As, as right. it is said, one size as doesn't one side fit all. So companies has to adapt, go on changing using different methods Methods and strategies yes. in, order to, in order to up, uh, retain or what you call get back their ROI on their product and service what they uh, made it for exchange into the market. Thank you very much for giving uh, elaborative discussion and covering all these aspects relating to pricing policies and methods. And I also thank all the technicians who involved in this uh, presentation. I thank them uh, one and all and Professor Reddy and Professor Gopinath. Thank you very much thank on you. my own behalf and thank on behalf you. of BR Ambedkar Open University. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you.